Since I have specialized in knees, hips, shoulders, and sports orthopedics, I see a lot of patients with knee pain and knee injuries and arthritis, also with shoulder pain, shoulder dislocations and instability, and shoulder arthritis, and hip arthritis and hip-related problems. So people have knee pain either due to injuries, which are commonly sports-related injuries, and these are mainly the younger patients, and also patients who have arthritis as a problem in the knees presenting with knee pain. Sports injuries can result commonly in a tissue called the menisci, which is damaged, and tissues called ACL and PCL, which can get damaged. Other area of damage in the knee that is seen commonly is in the cartilage, and this cartilage damage can be due to an acute injury or impact to the knee, or else long-standing damage to the cartilage, which we all know as arthritis. So damage in the knee tissues, like you will see in these pictures, are to menisci, and this tissue damage can be repaired using minimally invasive arthroscopic techniques and get people back to 100% of what they are doing. When it comes to the other important tissue that gets damaged, which is the ligament called the ACL, again, this is done as an arthroscopic procedure. In professional athletes, the ACL damage should be repaired to be very firm so that it does not get damaged repeatedly. And it's been shown that a double bundle reconstruction as opposed to a single strand helps to strengthen the knee ligament much more and the long-term results are much better. And this is a technique that I specialize in and also hence operate a lot on even a lot of ragarites as well as the Sri Lankan cricket team. In the pictures, you will see how this ligament called the ACL is placed in the knee and when it is damaged, how the repair process is done arthroscopically. And you will see live arthroscopic pictures that have been taken by me of a normal ACL ligament as well as a post-reconstructed double bundle ACL ligament showing you what the actual procedure is. In the case of arthritis in the knee, the management consists of conservative management, which is also very important. And part of that is muscle strengthening and physiotherapy together with weight reduction. Also, there are other modalities that we use nowadays and some of those are platelet-rich plasma, which helps to regenerate early cartilage loss. And the more advanced techniques that we use now are what you call stem cell grafts and osteochondral grafts. The stem cell grafts are done when there are areas in the knee that are significantly damaged and hence can be covered with a graft of stem cells and we expect the cartilage to regenerate into that area of damage. The stem cells are taken from your own bone marrow and they're processed and then placed in your knee where the cartilage is damaged. And you can see in the picture how the bone is prepared and then how after this the stem cell graft will be placed. This causes the cartilage to regenerate in this region and bring about good cartilage tissue which should then sort out the problem for the patient. Stem cell grafting is a cutting edge procedure that is done even internationally, only in a few specialized centers. And we at Durden's have many years of experience in this procedure and have good results following it. 
Osteochondral grafting is when there is a much larger area of bone and cartilage damage in the knee, piece of bone together with the cartilage can be taken out of another area of the knee which is not that essential and then grafted into the area where the cartilage is damaged. This again is a specialized procedure done at Durden's and having very good long-term results. When cartilage damage is more significant, we are left with only replacement or osteotomy options. Replacement is also done as a partial knee replacement where only the part of the knee that is damaged, cartilage can be resurfaced. When the whole knee is damaged, we have to do a total knee replacement and total knee replacements nowadays are a very good solution for uh, badly affected arthritic knees. Done properly using the right equipment, especially the knee navigator, which helps to give precise alignment of the knee, it has shown that knees which are precisely aligned would have longer lifetime and hence nowadays we look at 30 to 35 years at least of lifetime in a properly done knee. Here at Durden's, we have been performing navigated knee replacements over the last six years. Shoulder problems can be following sports injuries where you get shoulder dislocations or tendon damage which happens with age or following falls. Also, arthritis of the shoulder is the other common presentation of patients that I see. Shoulder dislocations happen when capsule or cartilaginous tissue is damaged, which normally prevents the shoulder from jumping out. This is easily repaired using an arthroscope and we call it a bank art repair. Rotator cuff injuries occur when a group of tendons that stabilize the shoulder are torn. These injuries can also be managed conservatively if the tear is not too bad and with physiotherapy and medication this can be managed in the initial phase. Tears which are more significant that where the whole tendon is involved needs a surgical repair to be done and this is again an arthroscopic procedure where the tendon is attached onto the bone using minimally invasive methods. Shoulder arthritis, like with the knee, initially can be treated with platelet-rich plasma or stem cell grafting and in severe cases of arthritis, shoulder replacement has to be performed. Hip pain can be due to tissue damages, especially in the tissue called the labrum, which normally can be repaired using an arthroscope with minimally invasive methods. Damage to the cartilage of the hip can be managed using platelet-rich plasma as well as stem cell grafting of the cartilage. In the case of severe arthritis and or in the case of death of the bone, especially following a fracture, a hip replacement is necessary. And again, here at Durden's, we specialize in looking after even the most elderly patients with so much of comorbidities having hip fractures which need hip replacement and have years of successful results for it. With arthroscopic procedures, the risks are very minimal as well as the tissue trauma or damage is very minimal so risks also are uh, not significant. You may have little bleeding on the puncture sites and very rarely minor infection in the keyhole ports which are used for the surgery. When it comes to bleeding at the port site, general pressure and dressing of the port site is all that is necessary and an infection of the port site can be treated with 
antibiotics and they heal very easily. And these are essentially performed as day case procedures. This is inclusive of stem cell grafting. Very rarely would a patient stay overnight due to pain in these procedures, which is also not a very common problem. In the case of knee, shoulder and hip replacements, the most important complication that we try to prevent is infection in the joint and which especially at Durden's having a dedicated theater for replacements, we have minimized to essentially zero in my practice. The other complications can be blood clots formation as well as loosening of the prosthesis and many other small complications due to inadequate or improper prosthesis placement which like I said earlier are prevented by doing the procedure properly. Pain which is not a complication but is a significant problem with most replacements is very minimal when done according to newer techniques and newer with the use of newer uh, modalities of pain management. Most of my patients have 3 out of 10 pain even in the first 48 hours after surgery and they are walking, getting out of bed the next day itself and walking comfortably down the corridor by the second day before they go home. Other complications of significance can be bleeding or infection in the wound site which are again very minimally seen and are easily treated. Here at Durden's, most of the patients who have had arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures are back to their normal lifestyles within a short period of time. And even the more complicated surgeries and replacements, patients get back to their normal lifestyle within a couple of weeks. We at Durden's stick to the international policy of knee preservation over knee replacement. And what we try to do is use all the modern techniques to get a damaged or early arthritic knee back to normal as much as possible and prevent it from going down the path of late arthritis needing a knee replacement. The modern techniques available to us at Durden's make sure that we stick to knee preservation as much as possible, leaving knee replacement as the last option. We like to advise people to come in and get their smaller injuries checked up and make sure that they're treated appropriately before they can become larger injuries which can lead to bigger problems. Here at Durden's we believe prevention is better than cure.